Okay, so we're meeting the New Brighton Ears, who are a, a local litter picking group. And it's the most amazing kind of grassroots local organisation. And they go up and down the beaches picking litter. They've been aware of uh, the scourge of plastics and the problems that we have for a long time because they've been seeing it washed up every day uh, in their community. But there's great camaraderie here. Um, and, and I'm quite looking forward to join, joining them on a litter pick, we'll see what we find. These things here, that you say man made tears, as they're sometimes known, needles are the raw material for everything that's made out of plastic. Any industry that's making their own packaging will use this as their raw material, if you like, and they'll melt it down and mould it into whatever. Now obviously if you look at them, yeah, they look exactly like fish eggs, don't they? So your birds and things like that will eat these, thinking of the fish eggs. There's every bit of plastic we've made since plastic was invented, unless it's been incinerated, it's still here. It still exists. Yeah. In one form or another. We've created a monster. Yeah. Here's a question, are you optimistic? You know, you must see constantly, day after day, all this plastic being washed up. Do you, do you think we can win this? I do feel optimistic when I hear things like what Iceland are doing right now, because you're trying to get ahead of the game, which is fantastic. Too many companies will sit back and wait for the deadlines to run out where they're forced to do it, like the plastic bag charges. I can feel the climate changing with regards to plastic. Since Blue Planet, everyone's talking about it, but it was only cranks like me in the past, you know what I mean? The reason why there's so much plastic in the oceans today is because we basically live in a plastic economy. There is nothing really that we buy that isn't wrapped in plastic, often far too much plastic. And also very little of that plastic is actually recycled. If you take a, a, a sort of fizzy drinks bottle, you'll find globally that the companies that manufacture that actually recycle less than 10% of the plastic. But I think it goes beyond just recycling. I think the biggest problem we face now is just the sheer quantity of plastic that we're producing is just like a tsunami coming towards us. The only thing that we can really do is start massively reducing our plastic footprint. And I think that that's why Iceland's decision to get out of plastic within five years is so revolutionary because they're looking beyond just tinkering around, saying, can we recycle a bit more? Can we lightweight a bit more? What they're actually saying is, can we get out of plastic altogether? And I think that that's what's really radical about Iceland's decision. Plastic's amazing material, um, but it's what we do with it and in, in what we don't do with it. No one bothered 35 years ago because it was just hadn't built up to the, the problem stage that it has now. Now it's a real problem. Blue Planet 2 really emphasised that. So now people are worried about it. And really you need legislation to say, do not produce any more plastic, recycle it. It's a mentality. Right. I think there are people, I mean, I guess our age, our parents said, if you've got the, you, know, you buy a lolly, you take the wrap off, you put it in your pocket if you can't find a bin and take it home. Yeah. Really simple, but that seems to have got lost. I think the answer lies with uh, the generation that's sort of the primary school, current primary school generation. I mean, we go into schools as well, and yeah. there are lessons, and yeah. um, we've got the magic box that we bring things out yeah. of that, you know, educate I think kids, kids yeah. instinctively get it, don't they? Yeah. And um, they, yeah. they understand yeah. why it's bad. I would say it's a bit like how my generation views smoking on the back of planes. I oh, cannot right, believe yeah, people yeah. did that. It seems crazy. Yeah. So hopefully when my kids are older, they'll view single-use plastics in the same way. Yeah. Did you really used to do that? <laughs> yeah. With Ison, we've got, we've got a long history of trying to do the right thing, such as 20 years ago when we removed GM from our own label products. And, you know, I see uh, plastics as this generation's uh, big environmental crisis. Um, so I think it's important for everyone to stand up and recognise their responsibility and that's what Iceland have done. You know, we're, we're a leading contributor of plastic waste. I've been aware of it having worked in shops and, and been on the buying side um, and, and seeing the amount of plastic that goes into our products and questioning whether it's entirely necessary. I, I spend a lot of time in the sea and on the beach because I'm a surfer and I've be, become aware of more and more plastic entering the marine environment and 
I think the statistic is in the last 10 years, there's been more plastic produced than the previous 100 years. And you can see the problem just getting worse and worse and worse, literally by the day. So someone somewhere has to do something. And I think it's very Iceland to be bold and to, to stand up and, and, and take a stand. Um, so what we've announced is a world's first uh, to eliminate all plastic from our own label products by 2023. Um, but I really, really mean it when I hope that other retailers follow suit because it's a time for collaboration. We need to work together to, to solve this crisis, which is a crisis for everyone.